Hey guys, I'm going to show you an exercise that I have recently learned from Steve Reeves, believe it or not. I'm going to show you where I found it in just a second. So as you probably know, Steve worked out most of his life. He took some breaks here and there, um, but he had a full gym in his uh, ranch at Valley Center, California. And I learned about this exercise just about a week ago, and I've been experimenting with it to try to figure out what's the best way for me personally to do this. It's a bicep exercise. And you know, just when you think you've tried all the bicep exercises in the world, here comes something else. And if Steve Reeves is talking about it and suggesting that we try it, then sure, I'll try it. So what I have here is a V-bar and you know, you can find a stand, standard V handle in your gym. And this one right here actually belonged to Steve. This was from his home gym. I'm going to show you a close up in a minute. So I don't know if that's where the magic is, you know, uh, why I like this exercise so much, but I really like it. And I wouldn't show you something if I didn't feel like it had benefits to it. And it's not because Steve was wrong, it's because I just couldn't understand how to do it. Um, there's no video of Steve doing it, there's no audio of Steve explaining it, it's text. So when it's text, you know, you have to try to figure things out, and um, that's what I've done. So I've been experimenting with this, and I'm going to show you first, and then we'll just go from there. So there you go. That is a really interesting exercise and some key points to remember are that you have to flare your elbows out at 90 degrees way out here. So you might be thinking, well, why can't I just do the V-bar row or a T-bar row? There's a few reasons. Number one, the dumbbell is way up high right under the weight. When you're doing T-bars, if you're doing uh, with plates, then your plates are spread out and it's a different type of tension. This way, the dumbbell is right underneath your V-bar and that makes a big difference. In the text in which Steve is describing this, he talks about cradling the dumbbell within the groove of the handle. Unfortunately, my dumbbells, let me grab one here, they don't fit. See, it won't fit in there. And I tried all, for all different types of configurations. Now, if you had a loadable dumbbell, and I do have a handle somewhere, but I've been looking for it for a week and I wanted to get this video done because I was excited about this exercise. But if you have a loadable dumbbell with a longer handle, you might be able to fit that in the groove here and then put your plates on each side and then you can adjust the weight, the resistance to whatever you want. What I did is I just grabbed a green band and I'm not sure when Steve wrote about this how popular these bands were. I don't remember exactly what year these bands started getting really popular. Um, we use them in my garage gym for a lot of things, uh, west side barbell, and uh, just warm up drills and things like that. But I tied my dumbbell, and I'm using a 70 pound dumbbell here, with the band. And that seemed to work really well. It suspends the dumbbell right underneath the handle, and you can really get um, good smooth resistance all the way. So you might be thinking, well, why can't I just do a seated row in the gym? 
Well, that is a horizontal pull, uh, so the weight is, the resistance curve is going to be a little bit different, and that's for back. What we're doing is targeting the biceps here, so it's a vertical pull. It's different than a T-bar row or V-bar row. You might be able to use a cable machine and, you know, somehow mimic what I'm doing here, but you have to make sure that you're getting enough height with your body so that your range of motion is not really short like that. Once again, the idea is standing with knees bent, you want to, standing with knees bent, you want to bring the elbows way out, flare them way out like that, and then go all the way back down. Up to the chest, touch the chest. That's actually what Steve talks about in the text. So there you go. I don't know what we can call this. Maybe we can call it the Steve Reeves curl. Maybe we can call it the V-bar curl, Reeves V-bar curl. Uh, whatever you, whatever idea you may have, if you have a good idea, drop it below the video. Um, unfortunately, you know, this exercise, I've never seen it before. Um, if you were a subscriber of Steve's newsletter, the SRIS newsletter, Steve Reeves International Society uh, by George Helmer and Steve Reeves, then you would know about it. But, you know, video at that time, YouTube, I, I think this was in the late 90s when this came out in the newsletter. So YouTube, you know, didn't really hit until mid-2000s. But I wonder, you know, if you experiment with this, what kind of results you get. I've been doing it for about a week, and the next day after the first time I did it, I had that achy soreness in my biceps all day. Um, do you have to do this? No. Are there other exercises that are just as good or better? Sure. Is it nice to have variety? Absolutely. And is it nice to learn something from Steve Reeves even after he's passed away? Absolutely. So anyway, handle like this. You can't have this one. This is mine. This belonged to Steve Reeves. But um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. You're going to have to tinker a little bit with it. Watch the video again if uh, you're still not sure. And uh, you know, Steve was about control and tension, smooth reps. He wasn't about jerking and dropping the weight. So you really want to think of this as a feel exercise. So maybe you do your barbell curls, your dumbbell curls, you know, those brute force types of exercises that you, you might do, the meat and potatoes exercises, and then finish with this and let me know what you think. All right, guys, have a great day, and I will see you next time.